Having an AI just walking around your game can really help making things feel more alive. And it's actually not that complicated to create. So let's get into, uh, we'll come back here, how to make this exact thing. These are all the objects we're going to need. So take a quick look at them, but we're going to make uh, new ones just so that I can show you everything we do. So let's make a folder new and get started. The first thing we're going to do is adding a blueprint class and going with the character one. We need something with a movement component and for that you need a character. So let's call this uh, character moving. Really doesn't matter what you call it, but anyway. So then we add our mesh. You want to make sure that your character is facing in the same direction as the arrow, which probably is about 90 degrees turned. Uh, so that's facing forward and then that is everything we're going to do here for the moment next thing we're going to make is another blueprint class but in this case we're going to look down here if you don't see this you probably don't have this expanded you can just click on the little arrow there and you can get all classes type in ai controller and that's the next thing we're going to make so we're going to call this AI controller, AIC. Uh, it doesn't matter that you call it this, but do label it something uh, clear and obvious. Uh, AI controller walker. And in this, we're not gonna do anything yet, um, but we need to make that because we need to set this character to be using that AI controller. So select the character moving, don't select the mesh, don't select the arrow, don't select the capsule component, select the actor itself up here go over to the search tab and type once again ai um auto possess ai place in the world you can also make this place and spawn in the world if you have something that spawns in characters you're going to want that as well then the ai controller class is going to be the aic we just made aic walker and for the time being that's everything we need here Next up, we're going to go into artificial intelligence and make a behavior tree. We're going to call that BT walking. And we're going to make a blackboard as well. The blackboard is going to hold all the variables that are used inside of the behavior tree. So we're going to call that BB uh, walking. And then when we open up this, this seems really intimidating. We're doing artificial intelligence. It's really not that bad. This is a behavior tree. It works much the same as a normal event graph would. Whereas a normal event graph starts at begin play or whatever other event might be called through it and moves generally from the left to the right. A behavior tree is well more of a tree. It works from the top to the bottom and it can make choices as to what to do at what point. Can you do most of this stuff in a normal event graph? Yes, you can but this is much more effective. If we pull off this, we can uh, add in a selector that is making a choice, a sequence that is a number of different actions after each other, or a simple parallel, which we're not gonna get into right now. For the time being, we want to have a simple sequence. And from that sequence, we're going to drag off a waiting node. And that wait time, you can just pull in everything uh, you want. Let's keep five seconds and random deviation, let's say uh, three and a half seconds. That means it's going to wait five seconds, three and a half seconds more or less than that. So it's going to wait anywhere between like, what is that, 1.5 and 8.5 seconds. Next up, we're going to go to making a new task. And as you can see, I already made an AI move to custom, uh, but we're going to use the blueprint base for that. We're going to uh, give it a name, BTT task, um, random movement. And once we've opened that, we type in um, event AI execute. So every time the behavior tree executes this task, this event will fire. And from here, it's relatively simple. We get our uh controlled pawn uh, and when you drag off that we're going to get uh the world location the actor location and then we get a vector which is the exact coordinates where this actor exists in the world dragging off that we will get a random navigable or reachable point it really doesn't matter that much uh either will work for this case and we will have to put in a radius now 
You can just put in a radius like, I don't know, 500, and now all your AIs will walk around within 500 uh, units each time they move. But wouldn't it be much, much more interesting to be able to tell every single AI specifically how far they're allowed to move? So in order to do that, we're going to uh, get value as float, and that will uh, give us a key to a float. So the float is going to go into there, and we're going to promote the key to a variable. We're going to call that range key and set it to public. Now, in order to get this value, we're going to go back to our character moving. That is this one, the one we just made. And inside the event graph, we're going to uh, delete these two because we don't need those. And we're going to make a variable and uh, we're going to call it range. And the variable is going to be a float. After we compile it, we can set its default value if we want to, which you probably should. Uh, let's set that at 500. And then when we drag that in, hold the control to get a reference to it, we can set value as float. And you will see that that does not return what we need. That's because context sensitive is turned on and it doesn't know that we want to do something with Blackboard AI. So if you turn that off, you will see set value as float. And we will plug that into the begin play and we will plug the range into the float value. Now, we need a Blackboard reference and we need a name. Let's do the name first. That's as easy as make a literal name. And this is a way that without making a variable, you can put in a specific value into a specific node. Uh, so let's call this range. And then we need to get a reference to our Blackboard. So that is as easy as, you guessed it, get Blackboard. And you just plug that into this. And now when we go back here, we can set it up so that we can feed that information into this event. Dragging up this execute pin, we can uh, go move to location or actor. The reason we use this one and not a simple uh, move to location, the, the normal one, is that you can see this only has just one out pin and this one has a couple of different ones, one of which is on move finished. Because we don't want this to happen every tick, only walk somewhere, wait a while, that walk somewhere else but the waiting only has to start once you've finished the movement so this is a very good uh, node to do that and it's as easy as just plugging in the random location we just created and get the owner controller into the controller pin for this movement then we just pull off on move finished and we say finish execute and we do a success just to be sure we will also make a finish execute where success is false uh, which we hook into on request fail. Back in the behavior tree, this is where the magic happens, right? So we can drag up this sequence and just type BTT task random movement, the one we just made. And you will see that because we set the range key as a public variable, we now have a drop down menu where we can actually say what variable corresponds to that. So if we click over to the blackboard here, we can make a new key. That's kind of like making a new variable, but for the Blackboard. The Blackboard needs keys in order to access information. So we can make a new key, that's a float, and we call it range. It is very important that this name matches the name that you put in to this node, because it's going to look for that name and then set the value uh, of that specific named key to this input. Now that we've made that, we can go back to the range key here, input range. Before the AI can actually start moving around, you will need to add a nav mesh bound. So here in the place actors, you go nav mesh bounds volume. You drag that into your map. And then here in the details panel, you can get its settings. So you make this as large as it needs to be. Don't make it too large because it does end up uh, being quite resource intensive if you make it too large without it needing to be all that big. But uh, if you just cover the entire play area in a nav mesh, uh, then the AI will actually know how and where to move. Now that we've done all that, we've made a behavior tree. We've put the AI controller 
into the character, we need to do one last thing. And that is inside of the AI controller itself, we need to go to begin play and say run behavior tree because it needs to know which behavior tree it needs to run. So uh, we make this one. And if we now start the game, you will see that our character is randomly moving every 1.5 to 8.5 seconds in a certain range. If we then back in its blueprint, set this range variable that we made to being public and compile it. Now when we're in the map, you will see the range it can walk. So I can set this one to a range of 100 and then drag in another one and give it a range of 1000. So this one will be able to walk much further than this one. It's kind of difficult to show that because obviously, yeah, it's uh, it's random. But this one will only ever walk very short distances. 100 is definitely too short. Whereas this one, this one will walk very, very far if it gets the opportunity, as you can see. So just making some wandering AIs, uh, either as enemies or just as citizens in like a city you're making, uh, this can go a long way into making your world feel more alive. But if you want to make this into an enemy, stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to make this thing see us, perceive us, and actually shoot a projectile towards us.